act the way you want to feel. Today's Cup of Joe lesson, we've talked about this before in several different ways. And I think we all know this to be true, but we so often forget it, and it's such a powerful tool. Our discussion question was, have you ever faked it till you made it? And has that ever worked for you? Well, you can use that strategy on purpose, the whole fake it till you make it, by faking the way you want to feel. And the way you fake it productively is you do something. You take action. You make it happen. And I can say this is true so many more times than I can count. Every workout I do, I would say maybe like one in 20, do I actually feel like doing it? Where I'm like, I am feeling it. I can't wait to get into the gym. I can't wait to run on that treadmill. <laughs> Hardly ever happens. But something does happen in the middle of the session. Sometimes five minutes in, sometimes 10 minutes in. I start to feel in the mood once I'm doing the action. Something changes. Same thing with writing, same thing with doing any of these things. A lot of times in my head, I'm like, ah, I don't feel like editing that video. I don't feel like jumping on camera. I don't feel like teaching that webinar. But once I'm doing it, I actually start to feel like it, <laughs> which is surprising. Now, this doesn't happen every time, of course. Sometimes you just never feel like it. You do it anyway, and that's another lesson for another day. But to use this strategy literally, like, instantly, we can change the way we feel by changing the way we act. Even if we don't feel happy, we can fake it. <laughs> we can fake the actions of a happy person and we literally will start to feel happier. How many of you have done this successfully? Maybe without even knowing it. I found this interesting. William James, a famous philosopher and psychologist, he explained that action seems to follow feeling, but really action and feeling go together. And by regulating the action, which is under the more direct control of the will, we can indirectly regulate the feeling, which is not. So feelings are not necessarily under our quote control. Anybody ever felt like your feelings were just out of control? We all know this feeling when we just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You're not feeling it today. You feel unmotivated. You're like, I don't know, I'm just in a bad mood. You feel like you can't shake it. You didn't choose that. But what you can choose is your actions and your actions indirectly regulate your feelings. Pretty powerful stuff. In fact, get this. Studies show that even an artificially induced smile brings about happier emotions. Artificially induced. That means you can fake a smile. So <laughs> go ahead and try it. You don't have to get uh, clothespins to your cheeks, but just right where you are, go ahead. Put a big smile on your face. Maybe you're not feeling too great about the day. Maybe you're having tech trouble and you're frustrated. Now all of a sudden smile. Your body doesn't know the difference between a fake smile and a real smile, so it assumes I must, I must be happy. I guess I should feel happier. I, I don't really know how this works, but study after study after study has proven this. In fact, one experiment suggested that people who use Botox are less prone to anger because get this, they can't make angry faces. <laughs> It's interesting, right? So simple, dead simple actions that any one of us can do at any moment to turn action into feeling. I've listed a few just off the top of my head. So for instance, when you feel tired, draggy, act with more energy, stand taller, sit up straighter, speed up your walk, change your tone of voice to include more warmth or more zest. What if you just talked a little bit faster? You walked a little bit faster, you stood up taller. And another quick exercise to do is somebody, you just mentally picture, what is somebody who has the energy I want to have right now in this moment? What do they look like? Picture them. Picture somebody who has the energy that you want to have. Maybe it's a movie. You can picture a character in a movie. Just mimic their actions. What do you got to lose? Now I know that the struggle with this is if you're not feeling it, how do you motivate yourself to take the action to change the feeling, right? It has to start somewhere, but I think knowledge is power. Knowing is the first step that you can change this, right? Well, let's talk about applying this to our writing. Fake it till you make it actions when you don't feel like writing. My favorite, start writing as if you felt like it, even if it's just gibberish. We've all heard this before, the free writing, stream of consciousness, whatever it is, don't edit, don't look back, just keep moving your pen. Keep moving the fingers across the keyboard, even if it doesn't make sense, even if you're just typing, I'm only typing to change my feelings. My name is Joe, my name is Joe. I don't know what to write about, but you just start typing. 
and picture yourself typing with a purpose, like like you felt like writing. How would you sit and type if you really felt like writing? If you were really inspired, picture that and act that way. Work against a deadline. This kind of forces you to start working. Get accountability. We all know this works. Set a timer. If you don't feel like writing, say, well, I'm just gonna write for 10 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer and I'll just write for 10 minutes. That way I feel accomplished. If you wanna keep writing, you can go longer. And I bet you will, because something happens once you start writing, it changes the way you feel. And give yourself a reward. Tell yourself, hey, I'm gonna write for 10 minutes and after that, if I do it, I'm gonna buy myself that latte or whatever it is. Or combine them all. Have you noticed maybe that's why Unchained Writer works so well? We sort of have elements of all of this, don't we? My actions change my feelings. I'm in control of my actions, therefore I'm in control of my feelings. I don't feel like writing, who cares? Doesn't matter, I can change that. Now let's talk about that moment that we all have. The moment of, all right, I don't feel like doing this and so how do I change my actions? You have to have a spark. You can't just have a flame. The flame doesn't just spontaneously appear, right? Something has to trigger the flame. There has to be a spark. And so take some time to think through what are the sparks in your routine? It could be a ritual. We've talked about the power of rituals, doing the same thing before your writing routine. We know this with sleep studies. People have trouble sleeping. If you do a, a sleep ritual, you know, you do the same things before bed. Maybe you shower, maybe you take a bath, you dim the lights, maybe you read a book. You do the same thing, you have a ritual, it helps your sleep. Well, the same thing can be said of doing creative work doing the same thing, getting your desk situated. Maybe you light a candle to remind you of the spark and the flame. Maybe you put on those noise canceling headphones. Maybe you start popping in a, a piece of gum. That's what, <laughs> that's what I do. Gum and headphones to me triggers focus mode. Maybe you put on a certain song, a certain playlist. Maybe you use that as the spark to change the way you feel in that tiny little moment of decision. When you make the decision to say, I'm gonna change the way I feel by changing the way I act. You have to act, you have to have that spark. I like how Mel Robbins describes it in her famous book, The Five Second Rule, where she literally just says, count down from five to one and then do the thing. So you give yourself five seconds. I don't feel like writing. Five, four, three, two, one, start writing. This works wonders with waking up and not hitting the snooze button. When you hear the alarm, you count down in your head from five, four, three, two, one. And then you say, once I count down, I'm gonna get up. Again, I don't understand exactly why this works, but I, I dare you to try it. It actually does. It's something about keeping control in the prefrontal cortex. All right, so then once you get that spark, once you know your own spark, then you can burn. Then you can turn into this flame. And once you have a flame, you can keep the flame going a lot easier. <laughs> My family and I have watched, I don't even know how many seasons of the show Survivor. And what do they do on Survivor? The first thing they do when they get onto this island is they try to make fire. And for those that don't have, you know, flint or a fire starter, it's sometimes a big struggle, right? They work and make it work and work, try to get that spark to turn it into a flame. And once they have that flame, they protect it, you know, they put more wood in the fire, they keep it burning and they watch it like a hawk. They make sure it keeps burning. A lot easier to keep it burning once it's lit. So sometimes we gotta put all of our energy in just getting us to start, getting that spark. And it can literally be the difference between making massive progress. We're starting to see it with so many of you who maybe for years never felt like doing the work, but you've learned how to create the spark that turns into the flame. One other quote that I have to share with you from my favorite, James Clear. When you're really struggling with the feelings, right? I'm just not feeling it. I like to have quotes to sometimes give me the spark. So I wanted to leave you with one that I've been using as my spark. A little bit of fuel to get it going sometimes. It's a good reminder. Growth is trading discomfort in the moment for satisfaction in the future. Decline is trading satisfaction in the moment for discomfort in the future. It kind of goes hand in hand with the other quote. You know, suffer the pain of regret or suffer the pain of discipline which is worse. And so I like to remind myself, all right, you have a moment, a moment to decide, am I going to trade discomfort in the future for satisfaction now? And if I do that, I'm declining. It's a powerful word to think I'm in a decline. So maybe that motivates you like it does me. And if so, jot it down, use it, think through what those sparks are for you and be intentional about activating them. And when you're not feeling it, just know that you can change it in a moment. Changing your posture, adding a smile onto your face, doing the thing. Good reminder for all of us, isn't it? I feel like each one of these sessions is a spark. 
I feel like seeing everyone else turn into flames and burn creates a ripple effect of more sparks. I almost view it as one of those, you know, candle vigils where, you know, one person lights the candle and then they pass it on to the next and that person's candle lights the next person's candle and lights the next person's candle. Maybe that's a silly analogy, but I, I sort of feel like that's what we do here. We light each other's candles. If I had to say there was one spark that worked for me more than anything else, it would really probably be a timer. I feel like I could write a whole book on the power of just timers. I mean, we all know it works with kids. Heck, my son never wants to clean his room, but if we say, all right, we're just gonna set a timer for five minutes, go see how much you can get done. Usually the timer has gone off, and, and he's, I still hear him up there cleaning stuff, because he got into the mode. And it sort of makes it a little more fun when you're working against a timer, doesn't it? All right, Unchained Riders, I look forward to being back with you next week to make more progress together. Keep on burning together. <laughs> Big group hug, Unchained Riders. High fives. Give yourself the pat on the back for being here, putting in the work, showing up. So proud of you all. Look forward to being back with you real soon. And until then, as always, I'll be cheering for you. See y'all soon.